Hey guys, you're looking at a uh, beautiful Zenith 5S150. Uh, at least that's what's marked on the uh, back of the chassis itself. My dad picked this radio up. I wanted to share it with you. Uh, he ran it by yesterday. The radio was missing the speaker. He happened to have a 5-inch electrodynamic speaker. Unfortunately, the fuel coil um, for that particular uh, radio was um, about 800 ohms uh, less than it should be. No problem. We just added a, an additional 800 ohm or a little more resistor, I believe it was, in uh, series with the uh, fuel coil. And then I uh, wired up a new speaker plug. Uh, there was also a short on the back of the uh, speaker plug itself that I had to take care of. The uh, cabinet on the radio is in uh, really good shape. It probably just needs a little steel wool uh, worked up and cleaned just a bit, and uh, it will show its original patina. Electrically, the radio is solid. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it up. It's running on the Variac at about 105 volts AC, but all the electrolytics had been uh, replaced by a, uh, another restore and the uh, work looks uh, fairly solid. The uh, tuning condenser is uh, floating a bit and it was totally seized up so I let it soak overnight and um, was actually able to uh, get it uh, softened up enough to work. Um, substituted one of these no-slip grip um, hair grips for a tuning belt and uh, threw that on and uh, everything uh, seems to be tracking uh, fairly well. Check the RF alignment, the, uh, pretty well spot on. Radio's got three bands, it plays on all three, the two shortwave bands, uh, extremely active this morning and um, we're just listening to some old music here just a minute ago. I'm transmitting from my uh, transmitter but uh, again very pleased with the uh, reception on the radio. Uh, the speaker we put in has got a small tear in the speaker cone so it's not perfect. Again I didn't take uh, time to uh, validate the uh, output transformer as well. Just check the uh, turns ratio. There's a video here I think I've made that I'll link uh, if you're interested in how to do that. But let me just show you real quick a few photos and a little narration of what we had to do just to make a quick repair. Again, uh, I'll return this to my dad and we'll look at doing a full-blown restoration at some point down the road. Okay, first thing I did was look at the power transformer and the reason why you'll see me here, I'm highlighting the uh, primary to the left, the secondary to the right of the high voltage section of the power transformer. Many of these Zenith radios I've had in the past have had bad transformers. I think sometimes they just get stretched to the max for the design, but in many cases, again, you may have a bad or defective uh, rectifier tube. You may have uh, old shoddy electrolytic capacitors underneath or other devices or uh, components that have shorted. And uh, next thing you know, plugging one of these vintage uh, radios in, you zap a power transformer. So um, not easy to replace, and it can be expensive at times. So if you're not accustomed to working on these devices, I'd recommend not plugging them in. Again, this uh, 5Y3 is where I, I just referenced I'll make the measurements here. You can see here I've got the two plate uh, diodes notated. And again, I'm going to look at the high voltage winding um, here running between uh, pin number 6 and 4. 6 is your top left, 4 is your top right, um, the way it's wired in my radio. And again, for those restorers out there, I ran my AC input line voltage to 107. I had 554 volts AC output at this point. Again, that was an, that entire loop. Uh, not from the center tap. If you look at that center tap piece back, I should have half of that voltage roughly on each side with one slightly less than the other. So again, just uh, wanted to document that for uh, future uh, folks out there doing uh, restorations. Okay, moving on here, I wanted to check the filament uh, winding here for the 5Y3, which I've highlighted. Again, if you uh, look at that, it's uh, pin 8 on the bottom left, pin 2 the far right. I had 5 volts AC with 107 on the primary input side. And then moving along to the uh, bottom um, secondary down here, and again, this will be for the heaters. 
of the uh, the pilot lamps themselves. There's two, type uh, 47, and the remaining tubes in here, um, 6.3 volts. I think I read right at 6 volts with 107 volts on the AC uh, input line voltage. Okay, now let's move up to the uh, field coil, and that's what I wanted to speak about. Again, the uh, radio that my dad had uh, that he pulled a speaker from, we checked. Uh, you can see here the schematic calls for a field coil that has a DC resistance of uh, 2125 ohms. In the speaker that my dad had, I think the uh, when we checked the resistance on it, it was about 1286 ohms. So we're just a little bit short there, and that's important because you don't really get the voltage drop that the uh, circuit is looking for. So what we did, or what I did, was insert another resistor, a 5 watt, 820 ohm resistor, so roughly 800 ohms of DC resistance in series with the field coil. Now the great thing is I can still leverage what the uh, field coil or that inductor does for us or choke it eliminates a lot of the hum here and again it's placed on the uh, negative side of the uh, circuit. I had one of the uh, my subscribers or viewers ask that question about you know where's the choke located in this design you can see it's actually on the uh, the negative side here and I'll point out here the electrolytic uh, capacitors again where they're located uh, C19 and C16, and you'll see there where the plus side is in reference to the uh, negative side. And the other dead giveaway, of course, we'll see the ground indicator back to chassis ground there to the far right-hand side of the speaker fuel coil. Okay, here's the location I elected to put the power resistor. Again, it's, uh, I think, just north of 800 ohms, you'll see here and uh, used a little bit of epoxy, placed it there on the back of the speaker, cut one of the leads, and again uh, ran a new lead down to the new speaker pin, measured the voltage drop here across the resistor of uh, 20 volts that you see documented here. Now I can take this information with the uh, voltage drop and calculate the uh, current, and then we can calculate the uh, power or wattage here. Okay, knowing the voltage drop now, I can take the current indicated by I equals the voltage divided by resistance. So in this case, I take the 20 volt drop divided by 820 gives me 0 0.02439 amps or 24.39 milliamps. To the left, you'll see three different ways to calculate the wattage or power requirements of the resistor. Again, you can multiply these numbers that you see on the left uh, by 2, 3, 4, or a factor of 5 just for heat dissipation. Uh, you can see in every calculation we ended up uh, just less than a half of a watt. I used a, uh, again, I think it was a 5 watt uh, resistor in there. Let the radio play for about three hours. It was not even warm to the touch. So um, again, you can see the uh, formulas I have written down. I won't read through all those, but I hope you find the uh, math helpful for folks out there that are new into the hobby. Those that have been doing this forever uh, probably adds no value. So again, hey guys, thanks for uh, watching. I appreciate it. Uh, again, my dad's already picked up the radio. Uh, at the time I concluded the video, I think he found some knobs uh, to put on it. He'll clean it up, and then we'll look at doing a full-blown restoration maybe sometime uh, down the road. So thanks for uh, viewing. Happy New Year.